guys. How does Day keep all those wide receivers happy? I don't know that that's necessarily his concern, but it's more about, uh, you know, using the guys in the right positions and in the right roles, Tony. I, I remember when Tony Alfred was asked, how do you keep J.K. Dobbins and Mike Weber happy? And he's like, it's not my job to keep them happy. It's their job to keep me happy. <laughs> and this would apply here as well. And you sign all of these guys in case some of them don't pan out or some of them leave that the ones who stick around are really good. And yet I do think they can uh, can make it work because other guys have made it work past guys at Ohio State where they – Ohio State wants to rotate at least six uh, at wide receiver. And when they have done that, they've been very good and they've been very successful. And there is really no complaining because everybody gets their 25 to 40 catches and, you know, 400 to 600 yards. And the culture that they have created allows for this. I go back to, I don't know, it would have been 2017, maybe. Johnny Dixon already had a touchdown catch. He was in the red zone and a play was called for him. And he pulled himself out and sent Terry McLaurin in so Terry McLaurin could get a touchdown. That's the type of culture that has been created at Ohio State and that uh, that was passed down to Chris Olave. Chris Olave passing that down, Brian Hartline doing the same thing, and, and the players have to buy into it. And I believe that's just understand that it's understood. They came in here knowing that it's it's deep. I mean, you had four top 100 receivers all commit at this, all sign with the Buckeyes, and then the next year you've got a couple more, and then the next year you've got a couple more, and – they see that they can see the depth chart, and it's it's not going to be you just walk in and you catch 40, 50, 60 passes. Julian Fleming, the number one recruit in the nation, caught what, you know, seven or eight passes this past year, and it wasn't until late in the season where he got most of those. And uh, you just you rotate, you throw the ball more than most Big Ten teams, and you've got a quarterback that can complete them, and uh, you just deal with it. And if somebody isn't happy, then is it really a loss? Yeah, you get out there. I mean, you earn playing time. Nothing's given to you. These guys know that coming in. It's not like you can just sit there and fill these guys' heads full of just, you know, sunshine and rainbows and puppy dog farts as they're coming in and tell them that they're going to get this, that, and the other. And then if they don't produce, you can't just trot them out there because of some sort of recruiting promise. So, yeah, it, it's it's going to be it's going to be a stacked room, and that I would rather have a stacked room than a than a sparse one at this point. And you know what? If if you lose a guy or two in the process, you know it, it. It sucks, but it is what it is, and and you just go on because I can assure you this class of twenty one that's coming in is really good. I already have you know uh, guys that are are dudes in twenty two, and it's not going to stop in twenty three or twenty four. Uh, so you need to you need to be ready to open the door when you hear opportunity knocking, or you know you may get passed by. And it's just another huge advantage of being Ohio State or being on that tier with only a couple of schools. If you drop a tier or drop maybe two tiers, then you're fill in the blank. You're the fourth or best, fifth best team in the conference. And maybe even at places like Penn State, where if you get a high four star or a five star at a particular position, they're so much better than everybody else at the position. Yeah they give you 80% effort, that's going to be good enough because they're just so talented and and you want more out of that player, but they're still the best you got at that position. So they're going to play versus, okay, if you don't bust it, Hey, we got all sorts of talent behind you. We don't need you. Yeah. We would love to see you at your best and you'll probably play at your best, but that's not even a given. So you have to play at your best because otherwise, nope, we got four or five other guys. Yeah, I, I saw some fans reacting to Chris Olave returning, like uh, uh, afraid that people are going to transfer. And that's, that's the wrong attitude to have when it comes to getting a guy like Chris Olave back. Just be happy and know that you know Julian Fleming is not going to leave because of uh, of Chris Olave. And Jackson Smith and Jigba played plenty as a freshman with Chris Olave, and so he'll continue to play. G. Scott is still learning and is – I doesn't even play the same position as Chris Olave, so there's no concern there. And Mookie Cooper already left. So I don't see there being any any negative impact from Chris Olave showing up. And if he takes a bunch of catches away from everybody else, why would they transfer after this season now that he's finally gone? No question. Great problems to have, really. And uh, the depth is there, I think, at most every position uh, to withstand one or two guys if they got to go, they got to go. That's just the way of the matter. And uh, 
you replace them with better players on the other end. That's just how it's been at Ohio State for years. So, and I know better players is kind of a relative thing, but uh, you know, Sean Wade leaves and and somebody else comes in the back door who was just as good as he was coming out of high school. So, that's the way uh, that's the way you keep this thing right on rolling. There was one guy that you guys uh, did not mention when talking about the running backs, and that's a Mayan Williams. Uh, do, do we figure that he has a legitimate shot at staying re- relevant? Yeah, I'm, I mentioned him. I said that uh, okay. that uh, you know Henderson would be a good change of pace either for Teague or 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 Mayan Williams. So you know, I love the way he runs. I mean, I think that uh, you know I don't see him as being a guy that you're going to be able to trot out there for 25 carries or anything. I mean, could be proven wrong, but uh, at least at this point, he doesn't appear to be that guy. But if he keeps holding on to the ball and the way that he runs and the way that first contact and second contact and third contact don't bring him down, it takes it takes an army to bring that guy down. I mean, he's got just that crazy center of gravity and just that lower body. Uh, you know, I think he's somebody who's very much in the mix. Uh, again, I don't see him as any sort of feature back, but you know, I think a lot of that too is predicated just on on the depth of the room around him. <laughs> 